What's going on everybody? I've been on YouTube and social media for a few years now, always cheerleading for the HVAC trade and the opportunities it can offer young people entering today's workforce. That said, there are a couple things that can hold you back as a technician that will slow down and hamper your progress throughout your career. Let's get into them. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Andrew or AK from AKHVAC. Today we're talking about three things that can hamper or hold back your progress as a technician in the heating and air trade. Number one, arrogance or pride. And this falls into a bigger uh, umbrella of issues and that comes from people that are either because of pride or arrogance have an artificially inflated sense of their intellectual prowess in the heating and air trade. When you put together the humongous range of HVAC equipment, the sciences that go into engineering them and making them run correctly to keep our world heated, cooled, refrigerated, and temperature controlled. The ultimate volume of knowledge is astronomical. It's something that nobody could master completely in their lifetimes. On top of that, if somehow somebody was able to somehow know everything there was to know at this point in our trade, in a year, they would still be behind because it changes so rapidly. There's constant evolutions of the technology and science that we're using in improving our equipment today. So how does this apply to holding you back? Well, people who have decided they know it all are the ones that are gonna get left behind. They're not gonna improve, they're not gonna take any time to read new literature, research new topics, and look at new ideas with an open mind. They'll be stubborn and resistant to these changes, and for a little while they may get away with it, but eventually they'll be obsolete, and they'll be replaced because they can't keep up with the job's demands any longer. Number two, licensing. Specifics of this will range from state to state that you're in, but essentially something that holds a lot of people back is a lack of desire or motivation to go get themselves licensed to the max for the state and locale they live in. Some people are afraid of test taking or they're just not good at it and I get it. Other people may have a good job at the moment and feel that their employer already knows their skill level and they don't need to go any further and get any kind of licensing to prove their worth. And while it may be true currently for their position, things happen, economies change, people go out of business, and if you find yourself unemployed, all of a sudden those little pieces of paper, whether that comes from licenses or certifications or extra credit type classes, those are all of a sudden gonna matter again to potential employers. They don't know you from a stick in the ground, okay? so. You need to have everything taken care of on paper as well as your actual skill set. Because until you can get yourself in the door to prove your skill set, they're only going to be able to go with what you look like on a piece of paper. Number three, the third biggest thing I see holding back otherwise great technicians is the environment around them. Now, I'm not an advocate for job hopping every three months. That's another issue that I could do a video on altogether. That is not a good strategy to constantly quit jobs for another 50 cents. That said, there are situations where you have great technicians in, in toxic or hostile environments or under employers that either don't care about running an ethical business, don't invest in training for their employees, or have the opportunities for advancement of those that have put in the work. You have to be able to distinguish between being in a situation where it's just, you know, hey, is the grass greener? Should I go over here to Bob's Heating and Air instead of Rob's Heating and Air? Or is it actually a toxic situation that's keeping me down and from reaching my true potential? Notice how I didn't say go to who pays the most. The dollar amount is not always the end all be all in the long picture. You do however want to make sure that you're in an environment or working for an employer that puts a high value on education, is open to the idea of promoting from within when those opportunities arise, and doesn't put their employees in situations where they're forced to act unethically. So once again these are the three biggest things I see holding people that are otherwise great technicians in this trade. All three are easily mitigated when you can boil it down to three quick things, keep an open mind and always be a voracious reader and learner and keep up with new trends. Make sure you have up-to-date licenses, get the extra certifications and any other training that comes your way that you can get covered. Make sure you've put yourself into an environment that fosters development of your skills, gives you opportunities to grow and advance and do so honestly. It's as simple as that. Thanks so much for watching guys. Stay safe out there and we'll see you on the next one. And if you're thinking about taking that next step and getting into heating and air school, check out the best RSI at www.refrigerationschool.com. See what they can do for you.